recording. So we just left my parents' house. You know, sad goodbye. Uh, I want to say thank you guys. I love you. Uh, it really meant a lot being able to, to stay with you guys for as long as we did. And you know, of course, we're gonna we're gonna miss you. So that's uh, uh, the that's one of the hardest parts about uh, this whole sailing deal is uh, saying goodbye to the people that you love. It's not goodbye forever. Just goodbye for now, but it doesn't make it any easier. So, uh, moving on, we're hitting the road again, and uh, about three hours to Portland, and that's the last stop before we get back to the boat. So, here we go. I'm James, and this is my wife, Tanya. A year ago, we sold our home and moved onto our 1992 38-foot island packet. Up until a few years ago, we had never sailed a day in our life, but now we're about to go on the biggest adventure of our lifetime. After 40 years of land life, we left it all behind to chase our dreams of discovery and see the world from a whole new perspective. There will undoubtedly be challenges along the way, but together, we can accomplish anything. We invite you to follow along as we explore new places, meet new people, and constantly test our courage here on Stella J. Oh man, it's been a long trip, but uh, we're about an hour away from Blaine. We've been gone away from the boat for over three months, so it's going to be great to finally get home to Stella J. Uh, I want to take a second and uh, thank everybody uh, for you know being supportive, for opening your doors, and uh, being so hospitable. Uh, thank you to all of our family and friends, and even if we weren't able to see you or stop by, we love you guys. Thank you for everything. Thank you for being there. It was awesome. So uh, now that we're almost back, how are you feeling? Um, I'm excited. I'm a little nervous to see the boat, see what kind of condition that she's in, see if uh, everything held up while we're away. But it kind of feels like the first time that we're moving on. So it's kind of surreal in a way. What about you? Well, it's been 94 days that we've been gone. And I'll tell you, the closer we get, more butterflies in my stomach I get. Uh, I don't know why I'm so nervous. I'm nervous, I'm excited, I'm happy to be home, uh, but uh, there's always that uh, the anxiety I get when I start thinking about how big the boat is and uh, you know, captaining the, the boat once again and taking her out. It's, it's a little uh, nerve wracking, but uh, I'm really excited and it'll be nice to finally sleep in our own bed again. Yeah, it'll be weird to be back on the docks. Mm. What's that gonna be like? It's gonna be nice. So, about an hour away, and uh, be there in no time. Oh my gosh, we finally made it. My heart is pounding out of my chest. I'm so nervous, I'm so excited. I don't know why, but I'm really excited to see the boat. I know the boat's still doing just fine, but I don't know, it's that anticipation, you know? It's been so long, so 94 days, we finally made it back. You excited? I'm excited, it feels like we never left now. It kinda, it's kind of normal. All of a sudden, even Ramey's like, what are we doing? Yeah, We're Ramey's here. falling right back in. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's nice to be back, though. Uh, looks like it's going to start raining on us, and we got probably, you know, four to six loads we got to make on the dock. And uh, we need to hurry. Let's get down there and check out the boat. Yeah. Ramey, come on. All right, here we go. You guys are gonna be seeing it for the first time with us. I see it's still above water, so that's good. There she is.
Well, she looks like she's sitting exactly how we left her, so that must mean we tied her up good. Gonna have to put the camera down and climb up in there. Maybe we can get Tanya to do it. Got to put the camera down, throw the dog in there, and we'll take a look down below. Still got it. Oh, and it's warm. Everything's still on. see what she looks like. Give the camera a second to adjust. A little stuffy, not too bad though. I mean, it smells like a boat, but I would have thought it would have been a little more stuffy than it is. All right, let's do a test here and get some lights on. There we go. Power works. That buzzing coming from cool. in there. It's just the inverter. Okay. Yep. Alright, well, we're gonna unload some of this stuff. We'll get it lit up in here. We gotta get to work. So the boat stayed really dry. That dehumidifier must have worked uh, real well. It's warm in there. Uh, all in all, it actually is in really good shape, so I'm uh, really pleased. There's not gonna be too much mold cleanup or anything like that. But as far as all of our stuff, uh, it's like moving in for the first time all over again. We got stuff everywhere, and uh, I'm kind of forgetting where we put everything. But, uh, hey, we got all night. It's kind of fun being back here anyway. And I think I'm just going to crack a cold one and dig on in. Good to be back. Well, time to put the boat back together. So we're all settled back in, put everything away for the most part, and uh, slept great last night. Uh, it's been pretty windy, so it's kind of noisy, but uh, I didn't find that to be a problem. Uh, I am just really impressed on how well Stella J stayed in her slip while we were gone. She is resting beautiful, all the canvas, the lines, everything. It was just put away perfect. So that's real good. You know, it made our job nice and easy getting back, and uh, she's ready to go sailing. But uh, we'll continue to you know, go through all the systems. I need to kick on the motor uh, and uh, do a few other checks. But uh, all in all, man, she did well. All right, another windy day down here at the docks. And I wanted to show you guys something, uh, something that I just didn't realize. Um, I put this canvas on the top just to kind of you know, help with the bird poop, maybe some rain, and just overall to keep the boat in uh, better condition while we're away for three months. And uh, as I've been doing my walk arounds and uh, taking a look at things, I want to show you right here all this chafage that has been happening all across the whole front. And as you can see, it's actually some of it's pretty deep. So it's quite concerning. Uh, I'm hoping that it's not going to be anything that will 
you know, tear, but I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take this down immediately, uh, that way I can stop uh, any further damage that uh, this is causing. Uh, I like it because the boat and the deck is nice and clean, but uh, I just can't have uh, my new canvas destroyed like that. So uh, I figured I'd go ahead and show you guys this, uh, that way uh, maybe you guys don't make the same mistake that I did. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and finally fire up the boat. Uh, she's been sitting a while, as we all know, and uh, I'm hoping she's gonna kick right over. But before I go ahead and put the key in and give her a crank, I'm gonna go through and make sure all the seacocks are open, make sure all of our fluids are topped off, and uh, hopefully everything will go smooth. All right, for starters, I'll show you where access to the bilge is, and it's located right below the companionway stairs. So uh, this is actually a uh, kind of a fragile, weak spot on the island packets with that grate being right at the uh, entryway of the companion stairs. Anytime anybody comes stomping down those stairs, that's right where you're going to place your foot. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and I'll crack open the top and dig on in. I have replaced this grate. Uh, when we purchased the boat, this whole thing was crushed in. And it's uh, very concerning because there's not much keeping your feet out from going all the way to the bottom of the boat. Now I know it's dark, so I got a light right here. But there's a lot going on, and this is where uh, you'll find the manifold for all the plumbing systems. We'll find our sea strainers. There's two of them. There's one right here. There's one back here. I cleaned those out uh, at the end of last season, so I'm not gonna uh, deal with them at this time. The seacocks that we're worried about is there's one right back here with the yellow handle. And there's one right here. We're gonna go ahead Crank both of these over. Now that'll allow water into our impeller for cooling the motor. So uh, we'll go ahead, we'll move on to the next step. So, as you may recall, uh, to access the engine, all three sides of, these, of this cabinet here is removable which makes things you know, real quite nice access almost 360 degrees around the engine. Uh, but today, because I'm just gonna be checking a few fluids, all I'm gonna do, we're just gonna pop this side off right here. This should give us all the access we need for today. Okay, first things first, let's go ahead and check the oil. Looking good, right on the line there. Not too dirty, I changed it last season. Well, it looks like my dome light in the engine bay is also another something to fix now. Well, that's great. That's okay though. I got a flashlight. Here we are, we're going back here. Let's go ahead and crack this open, make sure we got some coolant. I hear it, that's good. And she looks to be really low. So that's that's interesting. I wonder where all the coolant's going. Slow leak. Let's see if I can get them trying to back shot out so you can see it. The the water level in here should be on top of that. It should be very easily seen, and it is not. I'm even trying to look around the corner in here, and uh, I think you can also see that there's none in there to be seen. So I'll go ahead and add some coolant, and uh, I'm going to have to look into that too. I think it's probably coming from the heat exchanger. I think uh, one of these, these forward caps, either the forward one right here or back here, I think the O-ring is actually leaking some of the... Uh, antifreeze into the cooling water system. It's not in the oil as we saw there when we pulled the dipstick. Uh, there was no oil on the dipstick. So uh, it is concerning and something I'm going to need to look into. Let's go ahead and uh, it's time. Let's see how she fires up. It's been a little while. Come on old girl. I hear the fuel pump. That's good. I also put some uh, electrical tape over this buzzer right here. It is extremely loud and it hurts the dog's ears, so that's to help muffle it a little bit. Give the go plugs a little, a little longer here. All right, let's do it. Woo, kicked over, first try. 
Hey! All right, Stella J. Woo! Go ahead. Give her a little, little throttle. Little vibration. I got a lot of crap up here in the in the uh, cockpit here. Okay, let's go outside. Let's make sure she's uh, pushing water. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so that went well. We got cooling water, we got a little bit of smoke, but uh, for my ownership, she's always done that. I don't know if that's normal or not. It doesn't seem to be too heavy. Uh, and anyway, she's purring nicely. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do next, let me get the camera down here, is I'll go ahead and show you uh, our uh, acceleration and gear shifter. Uh, it's all in one knob, and it's actually uh, nice and easy to use. Uh, our last boat, uh, Voile, actually had independent throttle, independent gear shifter. This one's all integrated into one. So bear with me here, I'll get the camera down. Let me flip the viewer back. All right, so here it is. I got a little bit of throttle on right now, and there's also this knob. So I'll go ahead and back it off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this black knob in. Now that is actually going to activate uh, the transmission. So now when I put forward, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little load onto the motor. So now that's gonna move us forward. Yep, good, we didn't move too far forward because the dock lines are nice and tight. I'll go ahead and put a little bit more load on it. Oh, we got some, something vibrating over there. That's kind of annoying. There we go. We got some swirly water behind us. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fix that vibration that's driving me nuts. I'll leave it in forward for, I don't know, a few minutes, just get the blood flowing through her, and I'll uh, go ahead and kill the motor, and uh, I'll sleep better tonight knowing she runs good. Ninety-four days, a five thousand mile road trip, and we're finally back at Stella J, where we belong. So it's really great to be back home. Real excited to uh, start those uh, sailing videos again for you guys. So stick around, and it's going to start getting exciting for season two of Stella J. Cheers.